Hello, welcome to the Moon Scarab channel. My name is Ramon. On this video, I want to share an exercise using 10 prompts in which I explore and reevaluate the meaning of my significator through its depiction on different decks and real world things. I call this exercise 1001 Significators. First, let me define what a significator is. In tarot, a significator card can represent you, someone else, or a circumstance in their general character, personality, or something you're currently focused on or working through. Significators can be selected from any of the 78 tarot cards, the major arcana, the minor arcana, or the core cards. Major arcana and core cards represent archetypes and personality types, and they're better suited to represent a person. As we know, minor arcana cards are more about circumstances and situations, but it can also be used as a significator for anyone. My significator card is the lovers. To me, this card represents a powerful symbol of harmony, choices, and love. Not only romantic love, but also profound insights into relationship dynamics, self-love, personal growth, and love towards others and your environment. However, I've seen other the lovers cards on different decks and they convey other meanings and thoughts and sometimes they're aligned sometimes opposite and sometimes eh. but deep down i wonder if i'm reflecting my own hidden emotions when i see other images different from my original favorite significator card so in this video i want to explore my significator on different decks using specific prompts I think it'll be interesting to see how the relationship of your significator can change depending on the depiction of the image. If you want to join me on this exploration, I would love to hear your thoughts on how you see your own significator from different perspectives. Please follow the tag 1001 significators. Let's get started. 1. Which depiction is your all-time favorite and why? My favorite all-time depiction of my significator is The Lovers from the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. You know, when I started in Tarot, this was one of my least favorite cards. It's a depiction of a couple, but I felt it was not inclusive of all forms and genders couples can be. Second, the imagery is very similar to the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And by default, in my mind, it had religious connotations. Overall, I didn't connect with the whole tone of the image. However, once I started studying tarot in a very deep way and learned that people in tarot do not necessarily depict gender, but energies, and when I learned that this card is associated with the astrological sign of Gemini, I fell in love with this card. As I mentioned before, I'm a Gemini ascendant in Gemini, so this was the first instant connection with this card. Now I see this card in this specific depiction very differently. To me, this card is about balance, partnership, choices, decisions, the masculine and feminine energies that resides in everything in this universe, our connection with the divine realm, our place as part of nature, and the reality that we all have to deal with on a daily basis, temptations, choices, spirituality, nature, and the balance of all these elements in our lives. And I see more in this card than what's apparent. We usually tend to see things in a dichotomy, black or white, close or far, high or low, etc, etc. But I feel that within the DNA of this card, there are other options and choices in between, between the apparent view of things. If you look at this card, there are two people here. I see connection, acknowledgement of nature, our passions, our temptations, our love towards the divine. So many elements that make our personal universe and it invites me to explore the dynamics of love, embrace harmony within myself and with others, and make conscious decisions that align with my values and aspirations. So to me, this depiction of the lovers is my all-time favorite significator. It speaks to me very deeply, and from it, a lot of different levels of significance and meaning emanate. 2. Which depiction has given you a new perspective on the meaning of your significator? This one came as a surprise to me recently, and let me explain. I've never been a fan of Marseille tarot decks. I've always liked the majors, but never connected with the depiction of the minors. I think I got used to the depiction of situational scenes of the RWS images that when I tried getting into Marseille, it didn't talk to me the same way. But recently I came across this beautiful Marseille version, the tarot of Jacques Vieville. 
It's one of the rare tarot decks from the 17th century that's complete. It's been preserved in the French National Library for many centuries. Now, one of the most astonishing aspects is that the major arcana are not named, and the depiction of the lovers is quite different of what I've been used to see in Marseille tarot decks. So, I was comparing this image, this version of the lovers from this Marseille deck, versus a more traditional version of the Marseille decks, and something clicked. I saw something totally different in the depictions of the lovers from Marseille versus the lovers from the RWS, and it all comes down to a single word, commitment. If we go back to the RWS and the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, what happened? Well, according to the Bible, God basically told Adam and Eve, this is your partner, don't eat from the tree of life, name all things and beasts around you, and eat anything you want, and make the best of it. But if you think about it, Adam and Eve didn't have the choice to choose each other as a partner, as far as we know. We don't even know if they actually even loved each other. We can argue that they both made the choice that caused them to lose apparently everlasting life and his love for her was greater than this warning from the divine. You know, going back to the Bible, it's very interesting that the Hebrew scriptures lengthily talks about the love of Abraham and Sarah, the love of Isaac and Rebekah, the love of Jacob and Rachel, even the love Leah had for Jacob, despite her sister very clearly being the favorite. However, at no point in the text, it's even implied that Adam and Eve loved each other or even liked each other. With Marseille, I see a totally different story. I see a couple making a commitment before humans, before the law and the divine to make their union work. Is it an arranged marriage? We don't know, but the lovers as a name to this card can give us a clue. I thought this keyword, commitment, was a powerful message because we make choices and decisions and there's a lot of options around us. But the message this card brings, the new meaning of this significator, elevates it to a different level to me. Commitment to your choices. Not just going with a flow to make things work, but committing to it. If you think about it, commitments are very hard. Our yeses are hard. They're expensive. They take a lot from us. It's easier to say no than to say yes. When you say yes, you're giving your time, your will, your heart, and the best of yourself to be part or to contribute to something greater. And I'm not necessarily talking about love, but giving yourself to your choices and you to others. So this card helped me see the lovers as a significator from a very different point of view. And it only made my admiration for this card as a significator even greater. Three, which depiction of your significator provokes deep thoughts? To me, is the lovers from the Darkness Piercer Tarot deck. I love this deck. I mentioned it before in other videos. It's so mysterious, enigmatic, it's timeless. It does not portray people, but it pulls you into the spirit of the card. I feel like you are the human or the person in that scene. Sort of like the scene merges with yourself. I don't know, it's a totally fascinating experience to me. The Lovers has no humans. To me, this depiction of the Lovers goes beyond flesh, sex, gender, the body that over time breaks down and withers away in time and memory. In this card, the Lovers are inorganic elements that stand the test of time. At least, to me, that's the message of this depiction. It makes me think of love, believe it or not, in spite of nothing romantic being portrayed. Love stands the test of time, and not just romantic love. Love towards our parents, our siblings, our pets. Those feelings of happiness, melancholy, sadness, longing, and overwhelming emotions are like bricks and building blocks of who we are. They build our souls and give us so many life lessons that when we waste away in this physical plane and disappear, we take all of that with us to whichever realm we go. The soul is eternal, but it's built with every life lesson by all these nuggets and pearls and stones of emotions and feelings that we experience, all from the primordial emotion of love, our connection to our mothers in the womb, our connection to the divine, and in the opposite way too, from the lack of it also. Billions of people have gone through this planet and in one way or another, at a brief moment or not, 
Love has been part of the foundation of who we are, either by having it or by not. So this card really puts me in a deep thought about love, despite nothing romantic being portrayed on it, just by looking at these inorganic objects. So every time I see this card, it really takes me to that trance of thinking about life and love and other deep topics. Four, which depiction of your significator is difficult to connect with? The depiction of my significator that I find very difficult to connect with is The Lovers from the Morgan Greer Tarot. I got this deck because this version is the Spanish version, and it's a pretty rare edition of this deck. It was issued, I think, in 1993, and it's very hard to find. The Lovers, in this case, portrays a couple in a very sensual depiction. I have a hard time connecting with this depiction because, I don't know, I feel it's too carnal, too physical. Nothing wrong with it. Physicality is an important part in a relationship, but it's kind of opposite of how I view the traditional meaning of this card. If you contrast this image with the RWS, both couples are naked, yes, but the tone is very different. Some elements on the image are visually distracting to me. The RWS takes me to a different emotional and spiritual level. But with this one, I personally don't connect with it as a significator, in spite of being also the lovers. So it has a totally different effect from other depictions of the RWS. 5. Which depiction of your significator takes you to a different time and place? The depiction of my significator that takes me to a different time and place is this one. The Lovers from the Cyber Tarot deck by Hattie Thorne. She's an artist and a deck creator from the United Kingdom, and I love the theme of a cyber future in this deck. I love science fiction. I love all the stories about a post-apocalyptic future, cyborg, a high-tech world, technology, etc. I've always been a fan of science fiction. And here we see a couple, and they're facing backwards, very different from the picture of the lovers from the RWS. And on the background seems to be two angels holding hands as well. This takes me to a place in the far future in which, yes, the world has changed. Technology has changed, and most likely our Earth has changed as well. And most of our decisions, our options, are very different. But we still have that primal essence of who we are, our energies, our everyday choices, the balance that we must keep at all times to find the point of equilibrium in our life. Even if it's in the past, in the present, in the future, our choices are a constant balancing act that we have to endure every day to be able to move forward. And that's what this card says to me. It doesn't matter the time period. As humans, we are always tethered to a choices we make every single moment. So to me, this depiction of the lovers in this deck points me to look at the future, to be able to move forward in our path. Six, which is an unconventional depiction of your significator. An unconventional depiction of my significator is this card of the lovers from the antique anatomy tarot by claire goodchild i'm a total fan of everything claire goodchild has put out i have all her decks the tarot the memento mori lenormand and oracle the expansion packs the oracle of oddities all three of them her astronomy deck her books i love her aesthetic i love the depiction of all her images the quality etc she is one of the tarot deck creators that I have the most decks of and one of my all-time favorite, period. In the depiction of the lovers in this card, we have a heart with two plants or flowers growing and they're growing in opposite direction. And at first, when you see this, you don't necessarily think about lovers. The heart is what connects these two plants growing in different directions. It's like saying, in spite of the differences or direction of our growth, our path, the heart is what connects everything. And not talking just as a physical heart, but also the essence of who we are. Our emotions, our love, is what connects and merges everything. And so in spite of its apparent simplicity, this depiction to me says a lot. Seven, which card is my significator's opposite? To me, it's the devil card from the RWS. So when I say opposite, I don't necessarily mean the negative version of your significator, but a card that represents the opposite energy 
in a different direction. However, in my case, mine happens to be a negative opposite energy. My significator's opposite is the devil from the RWS. If you compare them side by side, we see almost the exact image, but in an oppressed and negative version. You see the lovers from the RWS, we see nature, we see connection between humans with the divine, with their environment, but on the devil card, it's dark, it's desolate, it's tethered. There is a connection with a spiritual entity, but it's one that is opposite from that peaceful and maybe loving energy that we see in the lovers. It's devoid of nature. There's no harmony, no balance. They're almost exact image mirrors, but a darker version of it. There's no choices, but subjugation. And if you take a look, like the angel from the lovers has its arms extended, open, like saying, this is all yours. You make the choice, enjoy. But the devil, it's like with his hands up, like, stop, you don't have a choice here. Your time is up, this is it. So to me, this card is the totally opposite, different energy from my significator. They're, it's very similar, but it's a totally reversed and opposite version of it. Eight, which other card is your significator sibling? To me, it's the Two of Cups from the Rider Waite Smith. I see a lot of similar traits between the lovers and the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups illustrates a young man and woman exchanging cups. Above them is an ancient symbol that depicts a winged staff with two snakes, called the Caduceus of Hermes, which represents cosmic energy, protection, negotiation, trade, commerce, duality, and exchange. A lion's head, a chimera, is shown above the Caduceus, which represents passion and fire energy, which also governs this partnership. The image in the card is a sign of a strong and unique bond, which is shared by two people in a relationship. To me, the Two of Cups is an indication of a harmonious partnership that is built on the union of forces, a strong connection, balance, and equal partnership. These relationships can be based on love or just mutual goals. It's a powerful card and indicator of healing, stability, and security, new beginnings, and balance in love friendship and relationships. The exchange of cups suggests that each side's emotions are intertwined with the others and their feelings have a profound overall effect. It's two becoming one. See that we have a masculine and feminine character like in the lovers. The imagery of a snake, a winged creature, and an open environment. This can also suggest a partnership of two forces within us, a masculine and feminine energy imbalance, our rational and our emotional side, the heart and the mind, our intellect and our instincts. So yes, to me, the Two of Cups is like the best choice as a sibling to the lover's card in many ways. 9. What thing in nature embodies the spirit of your significator? To me, in nature, the sun and the moon reminds me of the lover's card. The sun and the moon are pair so correlated and are constant companions. They have been our guides, gods, and lights in our path throughout history. We bask in the sun's heat and light. It provides Earth's energy and life could not exist without it. We rely on the moon to light dark nights. Our moon plays a critical role in producing the environment required for life to thrive on Earth. If the moon suddenly disappeared, then the consequences for many forms of life will be devastating, including ours. The moon reflects the light of the sun, while at the other hand, the moon is the one celestial body that can eclipse the sun from our view. Without either one of them, life as we know would not exist. They are so different in many ways, but similar in others. The moon and sun together are one of the most beautiful representations of balance and harmony between masculine and feminine energies. This alignment represents a powerful union of opposites, bringing about a sense of wholeness and unity in the world. 10. And last question. What thing in the ordinary world embodies the spirit of your significator? To me, it's salt and pepper. If I say salt, what are you going to say? pepper, of course, so we all know that salt and pepper go great together. 
Salt has long been an essential component of both flavor and survival. Sodium chloride, or NaCl, is essential to human respiration, digestion, fluid balance, and other biological processes. In nature, it also serves as a protein signal. You may say that the quest for salt was the foundation of civilization, with humans settling close to areas of salt mining. The uses of salt are not limited to cooking. They also extend to healing and preservation. Salt was regarded as the first commodity to be traded because of its variety of applications. Like its counterpart, pepper, black peppercorn in particular has a colorful history. Black peppercorns, which are native to India, were referred to as black gold and utilized similarly to salt as a kind of commodity money. Although salt and pepper were destined to be together, people were first encouraged to mix the seasonings in the 17th century by a Frenchman named François-Pierre Laveren, who was also France's first famous chef and King Louis XIV's royal chef. King Louis XIV was reputed to be a finicky eater who disliked when condiments overshadowed the flavor of his cuisine. Since then, the tableside condiments of salt and pepper have expanded throughout Europe and the Americas, but not so much in Asia, where oyster sauce, fish sauce, and soy sauce are the main sources of sodium. So, due to the decision made by one man, salt and pepper are a pair that complement one another effectively. Salt and pepper are still regarded as inseparable partners. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see your take on your significator using these prompts. If you want to share with us, please use the tag 1001 significator. As always, thank you very much for watching and blessings to all. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment and share it with someone who might benefit from it and click the subscribe button for more future videos about tarot, divination, and other esoteric topics.